So at 14, Sergei had been offered the national junior national coach job for Great Britain. And at that point, I had a decision to make. I had to decide whether I was going to stay in Nottingham and train at that gym with the head coach that was there at the time, or I was going to up and leave to a different gym where I felt I'd have a better chance of making it. At this point, we'd won the bid for London 2012. That was my goal. That was my focus. Um, going back to that time when gymnastics had lost its funding uh, after the, the poor performance in 2004. And we'd had a real talented crop of kids at that point. My grandma, actually, this goes back to that uh, that phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know, had, had basically sent a letter to a lady she used to play squash with who had been the minister for sport, a lady called Sue Campbell. And she basically told her off in this letter that you're not supporting... Uh, the British gymnasts, they've got loads of talent. And I saw this lady years later, and I've, lit I've literally just wrote about this in my book. And um, I saw her later, years later, when I was about 25, and I was talking to a group of kids, and she was there as well, and they were opening a new sports facility. And she said, I'll never forget that letter your grandma told me. She gave me a right telling off, and then uh, and they sent me some money. They sent my mum and dad some money. So it was, you know, bits and pieces here from lots of different pockets of funding. It just helped keep me in the sport and helped support my mum and dad more than anything. But at that age of 14, when I made that big decision, and ultimately there were three gymnastics clubs at the time. So I had to choose between uh, Hinkley, which was not far away. So that, that would have meant I could have stayed at my school. I could have stayed at home. They had some really good senior gymnasts at the time. They had a, a guy called Ruslan and a guy called Yevgeny who were incredible. And later on, I actually ended up becoming training partners with them when I moved to Loughborough. Um, the other option was moving to Huntingdon. It was uh, not too far away. It was about an hour and a half. We probably could make it work. We'd figured out that we could drive there and back every day. It was going to mean my mom was going to have to drive me, pick me up from school take me and my four-year-old sister, wait there for seven hours and drive back. So huge time commitment from my mum and my little sister. Or the other one was Essex and we just kind of, we felt in the end that Essex was just too far. You know, they had a really good system there. They had a lot of great gymnasts, but that was kind of two and a half, three hours away. There was no way we could drive. My family really considered relocating and buying a house down there in Essex. Um, but in the end, once I'd visited... Huntingdon and spoke to coaches from the other gyms and I say me it was more my dad my parents I made the decision that Huntingdon felt like the right fit for me we made that decision and that was a huge commitment you know those first six months like I said I would jump on the bus in Keyworth take the bus to West Bridgeford get off walk to school go to school till lunchtime and then at lunchtime I had an arrangement with the school that they would let me leave because I had to go down to Huntingdon to train um, and uh, my mum would drive me down there an hour and 30 hour and 35 minutes with my four year old little sister in the car I'd train for six or seven hours and she'd drive us both back and get back knackered do the same thing again and do that six days a week and uh, ultimately that became too much in the end and there was a lad training there uh, called Cameron McKenzie one of my real good friends uh and his house was the closest house to the gym. You could literally kick a ball from his back garden and hit the gym. It was, uh, so it was perfect. And he homeschooled at the time. So we had a conversation with his family. They said they'd be willing to take me in. And yeah, the decision was made. And that meant that my, my family were now not having, my mum wasn't having to drive me there and back every day. So they're saving money on petrol. But um, the, it meant that we were going to have to pay for board, uh, tuition, uh, and food. So it was a massive commitment. And I, I don't know the real ins and outs, but I know that during that time, it was 2007, 2008, it was a financial crisis. And I know that the one thing that really kept my parents and, and me hanging on was the support of a local company called PJD. And um, Andy, uh, I know Patsy and Andy, I know him as he was, uh, he was my granddad's best friend, so my, my mother's dad's best friend. And he'd always been a big supporter of me. And he worked for this company and he, he went to his manager and he told him about the situation we were in and he said, look, I think we could do something really great here. It'd be really positive and support a local athlete. It's going to make a massive difference to their family that, you know, they're driving all the way to Huntington every single day. He's got hopes of going to the Olympic Games. And I went in to meet those guys and the directors and I went in with Andy and my dad and we had a meeting and straight away they said, yeah, we want to support you. We want to help you. And I mean, that was an absolute lifeline. And that all came from, you know, that family friend that had gone and had that conversation with the manager at his 
is work and you must have probably felt a little bit apprehensive at the time going in and saying, can we sponsor this kid? But what they did was they gave my mum and dad uh, a pot of money that really made the difference and they also gave them a company car and a fuel car, a fuel card. And that was just unbelievable. I mean, you know, at that point, I'm 14 years old. Nobody knows if I'm going to go to the Olympic Games, but they saw the passion, the investment, the commitment, and they just wanted to support someone locally. And uh, yeah, I'll be forever grateful for them because that really did keep me in the sport. And without that, I don't think my mum and dad would have been able to, we wouldn't have been able to keep it up. 